Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for our weekly episode of Buy, Sell, Keeper Boys. This time for a double game week 35. Yes, another double game week indeed. Guys, if you enjoy this one, make sure you do drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get started. So buys are players you probably don't have but should consider bringing in, sells are players you probably have but should consider removing, keeps are players you might be thinking of removing but I think you should keep them and avoid the players that are pretty hyped up right now but I think they are potential traps that should be avoided. A quick look at last game week scores. Now given that game week 34 is not over yet, I'm actually recording this video on the Tuesday before the uh, Chelsea versus Arsenal game. It's difficult to put an exact uh, kind of figure on how well the game week 34 buy, sell, keeps and avoids have done but I think pretty much so far so good. I'll leave it to you guys to judge how well we have done and hopefully a lot of you guys have picked up some of the players at least with some of those higher scores such as Eberechi Eza who has done super super well so far with another fixture against Newcastle so with that in mind we do need to cast our eyes forward to the following game week because there's a lot of big decisions to be made for the final four game weeks of the season. So starting off with some buys in the defensive positions, I've gone for Petrovic as our goalkeeper by two double game weeks in the next three, which is obviously very, very nice indeed. And I do think I prefer Chelsea's defensive prospects compared to a Spurs, for example. Now, granted, the next double game week against Aston Villa and Spurs, this is not ideal and we probably don't expect two clean sheets from this. You never know, of course, in football, but it's pretty unlikely. But with Petrovic, you may be able to get a decent amount of save points against two attacking teams in Aston Villa and and, uh, and uh, Spurs obviously there. After that, West Ham at home. Could that go well? Definitely has the potential. But I really do like this second double game week for Chelsea in particular. Forest and Brighton is a real opportunity against two teams that don't score too many goals and probably won't have too much to play for at that point. Unless Forest, of course, are in a relegation scrap, which is very, very possible as well. Brighton, not so much. But two teams that have been struggling to score goals this season in general. So I think when we look at the overall rest of the season, just picking a goalkeeper to take you through from now until game week 38. I think Petrovic is probably a fairly decent shout, particularly if you're looking to bench boost in game week 37 and are looking for maybe a slightly cheaper goalkeeper. I think at 4.6 million, Petrovic is definitely that guy. For Fabian Scher, I would definitely also look at him as a potential buy. There is Chelsea defenders, there is Spurs defenders that you could go for, but given that Newcastle have improved so much defensively over the past month or so, it's definitely a really nice uh, idea to go for a Newcastle defender up against Sheffield United, Burnley and then a double game week which does include Brighton at home this time so pretty nice there. We also know that obviously Fabian Scher has done pretty well for attacking returns this season and he's one of the highest scoring defenders of this uh, FPL season but I would say that if you can't quite afford a Fabian Scher, Dan Byrne is definitely a nice alternative there. A lot cheaper at 4.5 million ish and you could also kind of look at Burns at underlying numbers. They're pretty much as good if not even better than Fabian shares over the course of the season for those potential attacking returns. So Cher has been putting in real attacking returns. Burn has been putting in, I guess, expected attacking returns. It's up to you what you think is going to happen in the future. But Cher has been overperforming and it does. It is definitely worth noting that. But looking at these fixtures, you definitely have to uh, acknowledge that clean sheets are a genuine possibility. Double game week in 37 is very nice. He's definitely another one of those defenders you can take through all the way at least until 37. You may consider swapping out a Newcastle defender for the final game week of the season, but I think maybe a switch from share to a Arsenal defender potentially in game week 38 could work pretty well. So a lot of people sold Human Son in game week 34 given that he had no fixture whatsoever and his form just before that wasn't ideal either, but it has to be said, a nailed on Spurs attacker in this run of fixtures is really, really nice with the double game mix. And with Son in particular, I actually like these harder fixtures. Arsenal at home, Liverpool away, uh, Man City at home, and then Burnley, who are a pretty attacking team anyway. Sheffield United, who are, will have nothing to play for, presumably, by game week 38. This is going to spell a lot of opportunity for a uh, counter-attacking Son with a lot to play for with Champions League on the line. This run of fixtures, I actually think, really suits Son. We often see that he does do better against some of the stronger teams. He has great records against the likes of Arsenal and Man City, for example. So even though on paper, these fixtures look like tough ones, although they're probably tough fixtures for many other players, for Son, actually these are the exact kind of fixtures you do want him for. And I think he will surprise a lot of people. I even think Son is a potential captain option for game week seven, 37, if you're looking to go a little bit differential. So a nailed on penalty taker with two double game weeks in the next three, 
no-brainer for me. If you sold Son recently, it's time to bring him back. Alternatives, if you haven't got Palmer, he's definitely essential to bring in this week. And Gordon is another good pick as well. Of course, if you do have Son in place in your team already. Which brings us to our forward buy, who is going to be Alexander Izak. Again, with those great Newcastle fixtures against Sheffield United, Burnley, and then a double game week against Brighton and Manchester United. Manchester United, also another team conceding plenty of chances this season. And we've got Brentford to finish off the season as well, which I think is a decent fixture for an attacker. Izak been probably one of, if not the most informed striker in the Premier League over the last couple of weeks, months, whatever you want to say. And even though Callum Wilson is back in training, back coming to fitness, I think Izak, the ability that he's shown recently, he is Newcastle's best player at the moment, and he's not going to get dropped uh, for no good reason. Again, still a decent amount to play for for Newcastle with those European places on the line. So I do think Izak could continue his great form. He's backing up his attacking returns with great underlying numbers, and I think this is going to continue. No doubt about it, Izak is probably going to be the most popular transfer in this game week, and for good reason too. Nicholas Jackson potentially an alternative there, but we've already spoken about him a little bit on this channel this week, so Izak is going to be my main number one buy. Alphonse Areola, I think, is a pretty easy sell despite his return to fitness because this Liverpool game is not an easy one. After that, we do face the likes of Chelsea and Man City for West Ham, which is really, really not ideal. Uh, Chelsea and Man City, you know, you expect those teams to score against Areola as well. Luton Town, is that even a clean sheet game? Probably not. We'll not expect any clean sheets between now and the end of the season for West Ham. And all of those goals conceded against Palace probably puts uh, Areola uh, kind of out of fashion a little bit at the moment. So pretty easy. A kind of, uh, I guess, goalkeeper to sell if you are looking to upgrade to a Petrovic for the double game week or Vicario or Edison or, 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 no, or Nana potentially. Loads of options for goalkeepers. Ariola would not be a player I would want for any game weeks for the rest of the season. And Zabani served his purpose. Uh, he's had a couple of double game weeks recently, but now those are in the past. He's probably not a player we actually would have for single game weeks. And even in the double game week so far in game week 34, zero points so far is probably probably not something that excites too many of us. However, this uh, this run of fixtures with uh, no double game mix is just not worth holding him for. There's no attacking threat there. The defensive clean sheet potential has been kind of there a little bit, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem worth it. Switch him out. Jared Bowen is presumably going to be back uh, starting against Liverpool. But again, no double game weeks, difficult fixtures. I just don't think I would want to be there anymore for him with the great midfield options available to us right now. There is so many great midfield choices to go for. We already spoke about Son, uh, Palmer and Gordon. You could also add Manchester United midfielders to that list. Garnacho, Fernandez. You probably want to talk about Johnson uh, as well at Spurs. Madison potentially we'll speak about very, very briefly in a minute. And uh, yeah, that's just plenty of options and uh, Bowen is just probably not even gracing the top 10 midfielders you want to have in FPL at the moment and Tony also a sell super frustrating asset to own recently for anyone who has gone for Tony recently although you would probably suggest maybe Solanke, Darwin these are the kind of players you might want to sell as well however Tony for me is a much more high priority sell. Uh, even though the fixtures aren't all totally bad, it's just about whether he's actually going to get that game time and the opportunities we will miss by dodging double game week attackers going for players who may not even play one game in their single game week, which is really, really tough. So, Tony, another sell for you. Dubravka is a keep. He should be good to go for a little while longer. Nick Pope, no clear sign on whether he is going to be back before the end of the season or not. Uh, it's possible, I suppose, but still not back in training, which means Dubravka is still good to go for these next few fixtures. Definitely would be looking to keep him. If you're on a wild card, potentially you might switch things about and, uh, you know, maybe go for some different goalkeepers. But for now, I think Dubravka is absolutely fine to just have and hold uh, for the next couple of game weeks, at least while we monitor that Nick Pope situation but certainly next two game weeks look really really good really good and I can't see Pope coming back before game week 37 at the absolute earliest even then I'm not convinced I'm not totally convinced so Dubravka nice and easy keep nice and easy cheap hold player to have in your team and Pedro Porro a few people looking to sell him he has currently got a Dorito of death on his name uh, flagged as a potential injury with a knock uh, a couple of weeks ago but 
think he's going to be fine as well. It looks like he's going to be positive and good to go. I think particularly as a doggy is now injured, that is going to allow Pedro Porro much more license on that right stand hand side of the field. We've seen Madison get substituted off pretty early in a few games as well, which leaves Pedro Porro taking up more of the set piece duties, which is very, very handy as well. And overall, with the double game weeks coming up, although I don't expect clean sheets necessarily from Spurs, I think he's well worth holding uh, for the potential attacking returns. And you never know when you are going to get a clean sheet. It could happen to anyone at any time. And the more fixtures you have, the more opportunity you're going to have. Sheffield United, final game of the season as well, could be pretty juicy for the Spurs defender. Now, obviously, if you're wild carding, you're probably going to look at things very, very differently. But for those of you not wild carding, maybe you brought in Eberechi Eze into your Game Week 34 team. And uh, you might be thinking, OK, well, I've had him for the great Game Week 34. I might move him on now. But genuinely, I don't think you need to. I, I think actually he's a fine player to hold for the next uh, kind of couple of Game Weeks. I mean, when we get to Game Week 37 and the amazing amount of double Game Week options just explode and there's so many at that point, you might want Want to think about making a switch but for now I think he's a perfectly acceptable player to just hold we've seen already that when Eze and Elise are playing together they are a completely different beast and we are seeing a lot of attacking returns for the Crystal Palace players so if you do uh have Eze already Definitely would be looking to uh, potentially keep him. I think he's a very low priority sell. I'd even look to probably sell players like Salah and Saka before Eze because they're a lot more expensive and actually producing less than Eze at the moment as well. So, yeah, we'll stick with Eze. I think he's a nice keep. Darwin interesting one. Uh, he was very, very close to being in the sell category for me. And then the news broke that Diogo Jota is going to be out for a couple of game weeks. So I kind of thought, okay, West Ham away from home, you know, this could actually be a little opportunity to maybe hold on to Darwin for one more game week. If you already have an Isaac in place, if you don't really fancy someone like Nicholas Jackson, and maybe you've got Erling Haaland in your team who actually could potentially be injured this week as well, then Darwin actually, they Therefore, becomes a pretty low priority sell and therefore a potential keep at least for one game week whilst we kind of wait for Jota to return to fitness. Now, of course, Gakpo could still play above Darwin. Darwin could still technically be benched. However, I think it might be worth holding on to him for one more game week if there are other bigger issues in your team. Again, it's not that I would necessarily have him on a wildcard team, for example, but if you don't have any chips going on right now, I think he's absolutely fine to hold on to. And finally, some of boys, we are going to get a little bit controversial here as always. And first of all, Pickford, I don't think too many people will complain about this one, to be fair. Uh, Everton, you know, okay defense. They will keep the occasional clean sheet. And I'm sure they probably do have one clean sheet probably in the next four game weeks at least. Maybe against Sheffield United. But Brentford are a, are a team capable of scoring. Luton Town are a team capable of scoring. We've got Arsenal away at the end of the season there for Everton. But more importantly, no double game weeks whatsoever for Jordan Pickford, which I don't think is uh, great. And now Everton, obviously, they're a team that you would be willing to invest in for a double game week. But outside of that, probably not. And I think he's a player that I would be looking to swerve. Now, if you're already have him I think he's fine to keep but if you don't have him already you're looking for a new goalkeeper Pickford would not be very high on my priority list of players to buy right now uh, probably not worth spending a transfer on to be fair so we're going to leave him in the avoid section alongside Malo Gusto and this is where the controversy starts my issue with Gusto is I'm not convinced he is he is kind of uh, at that kind of level in terms of fitness to be playing two games per week we've seen it time and time again Gusto struggling to play play multiple games in a row, particularly when there is a fixture congestion. And for Chelsea, there is a big fixture congestion between now and the end of the season with loads of fixtures coming thick and fast for the boys in blue. Now, the problem with Gusto, he might not even be available right now. He's going to be assessed ahead of the Arsenal game this evening. You guys might know by the time you watch this whether Gusto is even in the squad to face Arsenal, but I, don't, I kind of doubt he's going to be starting. And then after that, he's probably going to miss at least one of the two games uh, against Aston Villa and Spurs. Now, I think going for Gusto, in a, you know, is is fine. I think his his attacking ability is fine, but at the end of the day. The main reason you would be picking a Chelsea defender or a Spurs defender is because of the double game weeks. And if you're not going to get a double game week from a player like Gusto, then is he really better than a, I don't know, Burn, Fabian Scher, someone like that. I would much prefer to go for a kind of a slightly better single game week defender than a double game week defender who probably is not going to act 
actually have a double game week in reality. And I think that's kind of where I am right now. Gusto, for me, isn't really a double game week defender. And if he's not a double game week defender, then I don't really see the appeal in going for him, to be fair. So, would potentially look to swerve him. However, of course, if new information comes out between now and deadline, we might change our minds on this one, of course. Always open to changing my mind on things as we gather new information. But right now, Gusto would not make my free hit team. He wouldn't make my wildcard team. He uh, wouldn't be a transfer priority for me. I would maybe look to avoid, you know, if he plays one of these games, probably going to concede anyway. There's a small chance of an attacking return, but not a super significant one. Doesn't really seem worth it. I think a lot of people are looking to buy James Madison this game week as well as they look for some nailed on Spurs assets for the double game weeks coming up. However, I just have a small issue with Madison's kind of uh, stats, his numbers at the moment. They're not great. Not really getting, uh, well, he hasn't got any goals or assists in the past kind of six game weeks, which is a little bit problematic. And his underlying numbers aren't that great either. Now, I appreciate Madison is definitely a streaky player and he will go on a massive run at some point, whether that's this season or next season. He's been a great FPL asset um, at, at parts of this season, but I think he's a player that you have to own at the right moments, and this doesn't really seem like the right moment for him. Uh, you know, 0 .4, uh, 0.54 expected goals and 0 0.76 expected assists in the past five matches for him. That's probably suggesting that even in a double game week, he's unlikely to get even one attacking return. And given that he has been substituted off pretty early every single game at the moment, I do worry about that a little bit as well. He just hasn't been quite clicking for him recently. I'm sure that will change at some point in the future. But with all of the midfield options available to us at the moment, I would prefer, you know, if you want to go for a Spurs midfielder, I prefer a player like Brennan Johnson at the moment, who is putting up better numbers by quite a considerable distance and could make a real impact, playing more minutes as well. Madison over the past few game weeks as well. So Madison, not a player I particularly like, to be honest, even though he is nailed, gets minutes, I suppose. I don't know. It's, it's not quite good enough for me. I want more at this moment. And uh, particularly, you know, we're so close to the end of the season. We do need to go big and, and get those top, top players. And uh, our second avoid is Wissa as well. Um, yeah, I struggled with avoids a little bit for this game. We considered putting Holland in the avoid category. Obviously, he is not at 100% fitness. Don't even know if he's going to be available for game week 35. But Wissa, just with no uh, double game weeks, I think just a player I'm not super interested in, to be honest. Um, yes, he's done okay, pretty well recently. His underlying numbers are not quite as good as I would want them to be, though. I like to see a player with at least 0.5 expected goal involvements per game. And Wissa not quite touching those numbers. Uh, he is very cheap. It's a very, very good price for him. But I think I just prefer to go elsewhere. No double game weeks. The numbers are decent, but nothing amazing. I think there are other opportunities this game week than Wissa. So just to uh, conclude things quickly, yes, I do like Chelsea and Spurs players for the double game week, but they are difficult fixtures for both teams. And I do think there is going to be other opportunities outside of the double game week players. I wouldn't force yourself to have triple Spurs, triple Chelsea if you actually don't want them. And I think there's great opportunities actually with Newcastle this game week as well. There's also a lot of players I wouldn't necessarily rush out this game week, particularly ones that are playing well. If you're removing great players playing well, just because they have single game weeks, probably not worth it. But uh, guys, I'll leave that up to you. Still plenty of information to come between now and the end of the uh deadline, uh, particularly as there's still more uh, games to play in Game Week 34, which I'm very much looking forward to. But we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, please do leave a like if you found this video helpful and do subscribe if you're new around here as well. Plenty of other videos for Game Week 35 on the channel already and we'll be topping them up with plenty more videos between now and the deadline too. So hopefully guys see you on tomorrow's 100 Experts video and I will see you later mate. Bye bye.